What's up, Internet Attack Slug here once again, and for those of you who follow this channel, you know that if I'm sitting here talking to you about something, it's probably something fucked up going on in the video game industry. And as you might have expected, I'm here to talk to you about Twitch TV and the changes that they've been making this week on Twitch. The content changes, the way they handle their video on demand stuff, uh, it's been kind of a nightmare. So basically, here's what happened. There have been a bunch of changes this week on Twitch, the first of which was that the video on demand stuff, which is the archives of the streams that happen, are now no longer indefinite. Unless you're saving it in a two hour chunk as a highlight, the streams that you have done are no longer indefinitely saved. Now what this means is that if you are a free user, your streams will be deleted after two weeks. 14 days. Uh, if you are a paying customer to Twitch, then your streams have 60 days. And a lot of that is obviously on their back end. Storage is not, is not infinite. You know, their bandwidth costs. And what they've found through their database is that after 14 days, there's such a big drop off that it's not really that big of a deal. However, what this does is effectively totally ruin the speedrunning community on Twitch because there are certainly a litany of games that have speed runs longer than two hours. And if you have to go in and manually save your replay of two hours as a highlight every time that you want to do that, that is just a whole bunch of extra work that nobody should have to do. But that is not the most important change. The most important change is that they have now effectively rolled out a content ID system. It's not called Content ID, it is through a company called Audible Magic, and what it is doing is the way that Twitch handles their archived videos is that they are split up into half hour chunks. And if it detects a copyrighted song in their Audible Magic database in that half hour chunk, they will just mute the audio for that half hour. They won't tell you what song it was, they won't tell you anything outside of the fact that somewhere in that half hour, there is a song. So here's the problem. Content ID and its ilk are never accurate. They are, at best, a buggy, broken mess of false positives. And what we saw yesterday is that there was no warning for this new policy. It just got rolled out, and it just got applied, and it was flagging indiscriminately. Now you might say, hey, in the Twitch Terms of Service, it says you should not be streaming copyrighted material in your videos. I get that. That's business. That's the old media companies who don't understand how new media works are like, oh god, they're taking money from us, but really, no one is watching a Twitch stream to, to hear music over it. They're watching the Twitch stream to watch the person play the video game. So the problem now is that this system is flagging in-game music. Notoriously, Grand Theft Auto, which obviously uses all real songs, was getting flagged, and so those Grand Theft Auto speedruns were getting flagged and just muting all the audio. Now, from what I've seen, someone actually tried using the talk radio station in Grand Theft Auto, and that got flagged. So it's, it's just all the in-game audio is getting registered, which is absolutely ridiculous. So basically, you've built a website to stream video games, but you don't want video game music on your website. And I will tell you the most awful example of this policy in action was for a game called Crypt of the Necrodancer, which is out now on Steam Early Access. That game has its music composed by Danny B, who, if you haven't heard of, did the music for Cannibal, did it for Super Meat Boy. He is fairly well known within the indie scene for that kind of music. Now, this game did not register any of their music in any kind of a database, and the music was getting flagged, even though they were perfectly okay with people streaming their game. And so the question is, how did that happen? How did the music get flagged? The current speculation is that Audible Magic has a deal with SoundCloud. And because of that, they are scraping SoundCloud to add to their database. Now, I don't know what the SoundCloud terms of service are, but this seems super fucking shady. In addition, official Twitch streams got muted in that first day yesterday when all this stuff went down. Now, those streams have been unmuted because, you know, it would look bad for them to be muting their own stuff. But that just shows how broken their Audible Magic content ID system is. Now you might ask yourself, why is this a big deal? Video on demand is not the main component of Twitch. The main component is live streaming. This is setting the precedent. 
Do not be surprised when they roll this out to live streaming. For all the rumors that Google has bought Twitch or is about to buy Twitch for a billion dollars, this legitimizes those rumors because this is exactly what Google and YouTube would do and have already done on YouTube. So if you think that this is not going to happen to live streams, go look at the terms of service for Google Hangouts and YouTube live streaming. If they detect you are playing copyrighted music during your stream, they can shut you down and copyright strike you then and there as you are streaming. And when their broken ass system is flagging in-game music from stuff that they do not own and had, do not have the rights to, that is bullshit. So sure, you can argue that you shouldn't be streaming MP3s on Twitch, you shouldn't be streaming actual music on Twitch. Not that anyone is ever going to go to a Twitch archive to listen to music when someone's talking over it and playing a game, that's besides the point. No one does that. According to their terms of service, you shouldn't be doing that. But when you are flagging music from video games, when you are flagging music from games where the artists want the game to be streamed, but you have a company that is insisting that they own the rights to that music, or they can flag the rights to that music, you are scumbags of the highest order. So sure, maybe the Twitch deal already happened. Maybe they already got their billion dollars. Maybe they don't give a shit. Here's the thing. This is the internet. People who watch Twitch are hardcore video gamers. People who watch Twitch are knowledgeable about the internet. We are not a bunch of soccer moms uploading our kids' birthday party videos onto YouTube. We will find alternatives. I've already seen people going onto Hitbox and testing it out to see if it's going to handle the traffic that they bring from Twitch. Don't think that Twitch, because of, as big as it is, is the be-all and all of video game streaming websites. Maybe Google bought it because they, they saw it as competition and they wanted to ruin it and that's their money, that's fine. But why would you screw the golden goose when you want to spend a billion dollars on it? That just seems kind of stupid. But regardless, people are going to find ways to stream games the way they want to stream games. And the old media, the old dinosaurs can keep stamping their feet about they're stealing our music! But at the end of the day, we have another website just pissing off its user base because they don't understand the internet. One day, and it might be 20 or 30 years from now, people like me who grew up on the internet are going to be in charge of these decisions, and then perhaps we can finally get some common sense in our internet video game streaming. But until then, I am a tax slug. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time right here on this channel, and I'm out.